Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2024 Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport. This is what your hitch is going to look like when it's installed and it's a hidden cross tube which means that really all that you're going to see visible is going to be this plate as well as your receiver tube opening. So you get that nice clean look where the rest of the hitch is going to be hidden behind the rear fascia. The two inch by two inch receiver tube opening is going to be great. This is kind of the standard size for a lot of different accessories. So whether you're picking up a ball mount, bike rack or cargo carrier, you're going to have tons of options available for this. Now all of your accessories are going to stay in place with a 5 8 pin and clip. This is not included with the hitch. A lot of times when you pick up your accessories, they'll have one included. Uh, if you want to pick up a locking version, it's really nice, especially if you plan on leaving accessories loaded up on your hitch. We have plenty of options available here at eTrailer. We have a rolled style safety chain loop here. It makes it super easy for hooking up your trailer safety chains, whether it be a standard S hook or even a larger clevis style is gonna go on here super easy. Now, speaking of towing, you are gonna to want to adhere to the weight capacities of this hitch as well as the vehicle. So check your vehicle's owner's manual, see what it's capable of towing, and then compare that with the gross trailer weight rating of this hitch, which is 5,000 pounds. That's a pretty solid gross trailer weight rating. That's gonna be the weight of the trailer plus those accessories. So this will tow a decent amount of weight. Now, as far as uh, tongue weight, that's also gonna be important for your bike racks, cargo carriers, anything along those lines that are suspended. This comes in at 750 pounds. So if you have a four bike bike rack fully loaded up or a cargo carrier on vacation fully loaded up, I really don't worry that you're gonna go over those weight capacities. So this is a really great hitch. It's gonna open up the window as to what you can do with it. It does sit pretty far recessed on the fascia, which is great for a good clean look, but some of your folding accessories, they go into a vertical position and from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point, it's gonna be five inches. So something to keep in mind when choosing those accessories, making sure that they stick out far enough to not make contact with your fascia or that they can actually stow in that position at all is gonna be important. Now keep in mind, a lot of those in the stowed position, you're probably not gonna be able to open up your hatch, but no worries, you can generally drop that down if you need to gain access. As far as ground clearance goes, this one's coming in at about 13 inches, and this is gonna be mostly important for choosing a ball mount. You can measure the coupler of your trailer, take that 13 inch measurement, and then determine whether you need a rise or drop to make sure that your trailer combo is gonna be nice and level. Um, now, something else to keep in mind with suspended accessories like the cargo carriers and bike racks, they're gonna be extending the vehicle. So as you go up an incline, they're gonna get pretty close to the ground. Just something to keep in mind when going up steep inclines or any rocky or rough terrain. Now, as far as installation goes, this one's not too terribly hard to do. You're gonna be getting some fish wired hardware into the frame rail, but you do need to lower down the muffler, which is really easy on this one. Um, it does get a little bit tight feeding everything up, and especially on the driver's side, there's one bolt that's just kind of tricky. It's just kind of out of the way, and you're gonna have to scrape away some of the frame caulk that they put on there from the factory just to get that nice, tight, flush fit. So it's a little tedious, but overall, step-by-step, step, it's not too hard to do. I'm to walk you through all those steps. So let's take a look at that install so you can get your hitch installed. Now to begin our installation, we are gonna be lowering down the muffler and on our driver's side, it uses a bracket that bolts up in the frame rail. So with a 13 millimeter socket, we're gonna get that removed. Now on the passenger side, we're gonna to need to pry off the isolator. It doesn't have that bracket. Uh, pretty easy here, just with a, a pry bar or a long flathead screwdriver, use leverage to kind of get this to pry off. You can do the top or bottom, it doesn't really matter. Uh, sometimes these can get kind of tricky, they're gonna not wanna slide on the isolator, it makes it a little bit harder to get off, but if you need to, you can spray a little soapy water solution, that'll lubricate it, make it nice and easy for taking it off and also putting it back on later. Now there's an isolator further down on the resonator that's gonna support this, so you should be good, but this is gonna give us that extra room to kind of be able to move this down to get everything in place. Now in the instructions, they don't uh, state that you need to scrape away this underbody coating, but this does make it to where the hitch will not wanna sit flush. I mean, this is flexible, but also that's a pretty large gap. Uh, I don't feel super comfortable with that, being able to get it you know, flushly mounted. So you do wanna scrape this back where the access holes are, where our hardware is gonna go. Um, a utility knife 
uh, or a putty knife like I have here, it's gonna take a little bit. You're gonna just kind of work away at those high spots. A uh, little trick that I've found is an oscillating tool or a multi-tool like this works really, really well to just kind of scrape this off. So we're gonna just make this as flush as possible and we're gonna do that on both sides. So we scraped away our frame coating. It does take a while and I'd really focus where it kind of bolts up to the bumper beam because that hitch lives right here. So any of that is gonna cause it to make it potentially hard to line up with the hole. So really take your time on this edge and then just make sure it's pretty well flush because uh, again, it's, you want that hitch to sit against it and not have gaps in between it. So that process is messy. It's a little tedious, but uh, you'll only have to do this once. Now, as far as getting our hardware in place, we're gonna be using a fish wire technique. So we're gonna be using the furthest rear hole, and then we're also gonna be using the furthest front hole, which is this oblong access hole, and that's how we're gonna feed our hardware. So starting on this one, we're gonna take our fish wire and take the coiled end. If you need to, you can put a bend in it to kind of feed it back, but as you feed it, you're gonna feel for that coiled end on this access hole. And I'm gonna put a little bend on this uh, non-coiled end. That way it doesn't pull through, but also it helps when we get the hitch in place. So at this point, what you'll do is take your spacer block and slide it over the coil, and you can just feed that into the frame rail. Now seeing how close it is, I'm just gonna take a burr bit that I have here and just grind away a little bit of that edge to be able to drop that in. Uh, if you don't have a burr bit, that's fine. You could probably use a drill bit and just kind of work it along the edge here. Um, or even a file will probably work. It doesn't take much. Uh, just with that tiny little bit grounded out, I was able to get this in place. So we'll feed that carriage bolt in. Really doesn't matter as far as configuration. You know, it doesn't have to be straight because as I pull on the other end, we'll get this to drop in. So you may kind of have to jostle it around a little bit, but you should see that drop through the spacer block. And at this point, leave your fish wire attached. This is gonna help when we get the hitch up in place that uh, we wanna make sure this doesn't pop back up in the frame. Now, pretty similar technique, but this is a reverse fish wire that we're gonna use on the access hole. So we're just gonna prep this here and then we'll feed this in. And then we can just pull this down and that's gonna allow us to have our mounting point. Now we're gonna repeat the same exact process on the other side. At this point, it's gonna make it a lot easier to get an extra set of hands to get your hitch fed up. Uh, and I recommend having your serrated flange nut ready on both sides. That way you can uh, get a few threads started and it's gonna hold the hitch up. Now feed your fish wires through the uh, you know, corresponding holes. So it'll be this front one and then our back one, but we're gonna wanna raise this up over the muffler kind of tight here. And then once in place, that's when you're going to pull these fish wires to get that uh, stud to kind of pop through. What you're going to do is kind of hold this in place, get your fish wire pulled off and you want to make sure you're not pushing up on this so you can use your uh, you know, the hitch pressure, your finger, whatever you have, um, or you can actually take the fish wire, wrap it around some of the threads, and that's a great way to kind of hold that in place while you thread on the serrated flange nut. Just get a few threads started. Once you get a few threads started on each side, that'll make it a lot easier to hold that hitch up, and then you can get the rest of the hardware on. Now, if you're struggling to get uh, the serrated flange nut started because there's not a whole lot of thread, what you can do is start to draw the other ones that you have in place up, and that'll kind of pull it, giving you more threads. Now, keep in mind the muffler here uh, was kind of weighing on the hitch, so if you need to, you can kind of raise that up. You can use a, a floor jack or something along those lines, a block of wood, whatever you have, and that's gonna help get that hitch up a little higher too. Now, we're gonna go ahead and snug them all down now that we have them in place. Uh, again, three quarter inch socket's gonna do that. Now, when it comes to the bolt on the driver's side rear hole, it is, tight, there's no easy way to get to it, and it's hard to get a socket. Uh, if you can get a socket in there, by all means do that. Might be a little bit easier to use a ratcheting three quarter inch wrench uh, to get this snug down. 
So we're gonna go through, we'll get everything snug down, and then we're gonna come back with our torque wrench. So you really don't have to get crazy here. Uh, hand tight is definitely gonna be good enough for now, and the torque wrench will take care of the rest. Now with everything in place, we got that hole lined up for our exhaust bracket. We're gonna to torque this down using the three quarter inch socket. Torque settings are found in the instruction manual. If you need a torque wrench, we have them available here at eTrailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free. Now this is gonna be important because it's gonna make sure that the hardware is gonna be tight enough for the lifespan of the hitch, but also not too tight putting stress on the hardware. So this is an important step. We'll go through and get these all torqued down. Now that driver's side rear bolt is again gonna be a little bit trouble when it comes to using a torque wrench. And uh, to get just a standard socket and torque wrench in there, it's probably not gonna work out very well. Uh, best way you can attack it is by using a crow's foot attachment, um, which it basically goes on to the end of this. It'll allow you to slide in there. You'll have to reset it a few times. Um, it's gonna get a little bit tricky here, but what it comes down to is making sure that it's close or at that torque setting, that way it's gonna be safe. With those torqued down, we'll go ahead and raise up our muffler. Um, you may want to put this isolator back on first. That'll kind of hold it in place and make it a lot easier for us to get that bracket in. Now we'll take our new bolt and raise up our bracket and get that threaded in. Now this is going to be a 13 millimeter socket. We'll get this snug down. There's also going to be a torque setting uh, associated with this, so we'll get this torque down as well. With everything torqued down, we've officially installed our hitch. All that's left to do is hook up our accessories in our hitch and hit the road. And that was a look at installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver on a 2024 Volkswagen Atlas Crossport.